Hello everyone, this is Jay from Python in Office. In this channel, we explore how to use the Python programming language to make our jobs and lives easier. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any future video updates. Today, we'll use Python to create a high fidelity Excel spreadsheet. It means that the Python generated Excel file will contain not only just hard code values, but also formulas, links, and graphs, and funds, colors. So the file looks exactly like an Excel file that's created by a human. There are quite a lot to cover, so we'll divide the material into three parts. In this part one, we'll familiarize ourselves with the Excel Excel Writer library and the virtual Excel environment that Python creates. One thing to note before we start, as the name suggests, Excel X Writer can only write Excel files and they cannot read existing spreadsheets. So just keep that in mind. If you want to read Excel files, then this is not the right tool for that purpose. And just a fun fact, in Pandas library, the pd.toExcel method actually uses Excel X Writer as one of its engines to create Excel files. So we'll first pip install the Excel X Writer library. I've already installed it here on my site. Once we have the library installed, let's first import the library into a Python. And then we'll create a workbook. So we'll name the workbook in variable or object at WB, short for workbook. And we'll pass a file path as the argument. So I'll create this file called hfxl.xx at this location. So now we have a workbook. We can use it to add more sheets. It'll be workbook dot add worksheets add worksheet. So now we add one worksheet without a name. If we don't supply a name or an argument inside add worksheets, then the sheets will just be named as sheet one, sheet two, and so on, just like how Excel would behave when we create a new sheet inside the actual Excel application. So now we're gonna create another sheet and we're we're going to call it input. So this is our second sheet, and we'll create a third sheet. So now we want to close and save the file. Just do workbook.close. This is very important because if you don't run this command, then your worksheet will not be saved. And let's go to this folder right here. This is where we saved the file. Let's take a look at that Excel file that we just created. Here we go. So this is the file. Remember that. Remember that we executed the add worksheet three times, twice without any argument, and then once with an argument input. So that's why, although there is no sheet two in the workbook, because um, we because we run add worksheet three times, so this is why you have a sheet three. So now let's take a look at how we can reference cells and ranges. You probably already know that in Excel there are two common ways to reference cells for example we can for example we can call the cell a1 or row one and column one but remember that python index starts from zero so uh, this a1 cell actually becomes row zero and column zero and the cell at row one and column one is actually this one here b2 although the a1 notation is easier for people to read and at the same time we also use it inside Excel folders, for example, like this. However, this row and column notation is easier to program with because they're just integer numbers that, that we can we can calculate. And Excel X Writer library provides a convenient method to convert the integer number, the coordinates, uh, row, column notation into the A1 style notation. Let's go back to here. So this is how we can import uh, the conversion function from xxwriter.utility import excel row call to cell. Made the type of error. There is no underscore between here. So now if we try this, excel row call to cell. We're going to pass in, for example, 0, 0, then it's going to return the string a1. And if we test another one, row 10 and cell 25. So this will give Z11, I believe. Yes. So because of the zero starting index, 25 is actually the 26th element. 
In addition to this method, there are a few other functions that serve similar purposes. I'm going to import all of them. There's one called Excel cell to row column. And there's also Excel range and Excel range ABS. So uh, as you probably guessed, uh, this one will convert the A1 notation back into the row and column coordinates. So 0, 0 is at 11, so I'm going to leave us uh, 1025. And the Excel range will actually take four coordinates. So for example, uh, let's say a range from here to here. The range start from D6 and end at G10. So that's going to be row 6 and so the starting cell is row 6 and column 4. It's going to be 5 and 3 because of the zero starting index. And the ending cell is row 11. It's going to be 10 and 7. So it's going to be 6. And if we do this, then um, it's going to give the range D6 G to G11. Also, in case you need the absolute reference to a range, uh, just use the Excel range ABS. Uh, that's going to add the dollar signs to your to your range to make it an uh, absolute reference so that your formulas are fixed. We just talked about cells and how about worksheets? Although there's a function to get a worksheet, it's kind of useless because if you think about the Excel X writer library, it cannot read existing spreadsheets. So that function is not that useful and we'll touch on that very soon. So we're going to use the same file name uh, right here. So this time we're going to add some values inside. If we use the same file path and name, the previous file will be overwritten. So if that's not what you wanted, you should use a different file name when creating this spreadsheet. So there we have a workbook and now we're going to create a worksheet. So we're going to just call it AWS and similar to how you can create a workbook and assign it to a variable, we can also create a worksheet. So this WS, this is actually the first tab inside of our Excel. And because this library allows only writing to Excel files, so every time we want to write something to the spreadsheet, we can just create a spreadsheet like this and then assign it to a variable. So there's really no point to use the method to get a worksheet. And to input values into the worksheet, we can just use the worksheet.write. And here the write method takes either the cell referencing notation, you can type A1 here, and let's say the message is hello Excel, or you can do it's going to be 1, 1, uh, that's, going to, that's cell B2, hello again. And you notice that uh, when you run the write method, Python returns a zero. That just means uh, the write operation is successful. Okay, so let's close and save the file, and we're going to see what's inside. So there you go. In cell A1, we have hello Excel, and then in cell B2, we have hello again. And both cells are written by Python. I'm going to close the Excel file and recycle the same file name. So this time we'll also create a worksheet and I'll actually give it a name input. So now we can write, let's write some values in the cells. So one thing to note is when you use the A1 notation, the A or the, or the letter part has to be capitalized. If you do this, then it's not going to recognize it. So you have to uh, use the capital letter A or B or any a column that you're trying to input values to. So here I've added three numbers, a one in cell A1, two in cell A2, and then three in cell A3. So let's add those three values using a formula. And let's put that formula in cell A4. So here's how we can write formulas into an Excel file. For the second argument in write, just enter the Excel formula like a string. So it's going to be quote equal sum A1 to A3 and end quote. That's it. Save the file and let's take a look. So here is our tab named input and our three numbers, three values, one, two, three, and the fourth value, this is actually a formula. It's a sum of the first three cells. I think this video is long enough. So that's it for part one of the series. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next one.